Levamos agora ao secretário executivo do Ministério, ex-secretário executivo do Ministério do Brasil. Do Ministério do Social Development, da Federal, from Brasil, the Federal Republic of Brazil, e diretor do Sustainable Development Center. Also, for we is going to be moder make, making the second presentation. The, this expert will talk about the, the intersectorial impact for for social determination on health and the factors also of of cash transfers. After the presentation, we're going to have a 30 minute for the discussion, followed by the lunch, and we'll be back in the afternoon with a debate. I'm going to be speaking in Spanish. The presentation is in English to make things easier for your communication. And uh, if I don't recall the word in Spanish, I'm going to re resort to Portuguese. The whole idea of this presentation is to deal, deal with this point, with the two recent studies that have been released, a study from the IMF on the economic perspective of the coming decade, and also a study, a recent analysis from the ILO, from ILO on the consequences of the new economic scenario for public policies. Then the whole idea is of using both analysis for us to think on the possible future possibilities of, our, of public intervention and also kind of the other possibilities that we have at hand considering the new platform of sustainable development in health. So these are the two key topics for my presentation. Economic perspective, I repeat, <coughs> and sustainable development as thing I have to say is where it's my position. I'm talking from this center for sustainable development, with, with an, which is a UNDP center. We want to produce policy analyses, policy analyses, public policies especially, in order for advocacy for sustainable development. Also, we work with different with platforms, electronic platform platforms for the implementation of public policies and for the implementation of monitoring of sustainable development, and also for a dialogue or the debate, the work that Isaac is performing here. The agenda, social protection forests, sustainable development. We see the objectives in the programmatic areas of work, sustainable cities, financing, and inequality. Then we start off by this concept, <coughs> the key idea of it all. We know already that public policy has a positive impact in reducing poverty, inequalities, and especially it improves the quality of life of people. This is an example of Brazil. The quality is not so good, but you can see kind of the, uh, the reduction of child mortality rates in Brazil in 2001. Up to, 20, up to 2012, and also we see the impact for each region of Brazil. We see the poorest regions of Brazil have the highest impact, the northeast and the north part of Brazil. <coughs> they have the, have the highest impact. Another impact on health, on health is reduction of actually of malnutrition. There was a reduction of 82%. This is closely linked to social policies, especially also the social protection policies, I mean. This is the FAO map from the year, uh, from the 90s. You can see South America, it's FAO map for a more favorable situ situation in 2014. This is <coughs> a positive process that the South American countries have experienced in the first decade of this century. And this is closely 
related to social protection policies. An example is actually the, is a cash transfer in Brazil, which is called, called Bolsa Familia. This is a contribution of this cash transfers in order to reduce levels of poverty in the different age brackets, extreme poverty, which is an important contribution in order to reduce these levels, extreme poverty, then also with the Bolsa Familia cash transfer system, and now also the, the recent changes from 2013 with almost the full the eradication of extreme poverty in Brazil. This, uh, what we have here is, we have a residual effect, which is part of a process which is the new poverty or the new extreme poverty in this case. Young families, immigrants, illegal aliens, people in, uh, in situation of extreme poverty. What matters is the capacity by the state of responding to the demands of this new population when detected, which is what matters the most, is not the presence of these people by in itself, but the capacity of response by the state according to the needs of these people. This is what really matters. When we talk then about vulnerability, extreme poverty, the poverty targeted population is a phenomenon that will be repeated many times. What it matters the most is capacity, the capacity of being able to serve the needs of this new poverty or this new extreme poverty population. This population in extreme poverty, this is what is happening currently, what is happening currently in Brazil. There are other countries, this happened not only in South America, that he had a virtuous cycle but also, for example, in Africa, in South Africa, this is the, uh, actually see in, we see here the social protection investments in this case, in social, uh, social welfare that grew nominally, but in terms of percentages of GDP, it remained constant in time. This is happening also with health. I don't know if you talked about this yesterday. In health, there is a nominal growth, but not as much as the percentage, the percentage in GDT, GDP terms. We can talk about this later if you wish. This is the, the fall or the drop observed in child mortality rates, which is very important. Uh, there are many factors and also observed in South America. I'm bringing to your attention what is happening in South America, but not only South America, but also in other countries, in the African countries. Africa is very important for us, for us, because up to a certain extent, much of what's experienced in, uh, in Latin America is now being experienced in the African countries. Let's imagine urban development, what we call in Latin and South America or urban transition is what is happening today in Africa. The expansion of, of, of fiscal space for investment in public policies, now this, this is what's happening in Africa. Development, I would say, of many public policies, health, education, social welfare, social security, and other things, the same, same tension in terms of infrastructure versus social investments, investments in the social sphere, something that has happened actually in South American countries in their development process is we're going to see, we're going to see that this is also happening in Africa. We can say that we had very positive years in terms of economic growth and this uh, prompted a growth in the in amount of investments made in social policies under the perspective of a small growth or null growth or zero growth then what can what is to be expected i think that this is part of the debate the strategic debate critical debate i might add for latin america This is just something that I would like to bring to your attention 
talking about these figures, there is a perspective of reducing poverty. But you see here down below, this is sub-Saharan Africa because actually of, uh, there will be an absolute growth of poverty in terms of birth rates, even though there can be a drop, a, a, a relative drop of poverty because there are many women, poor, poor women, that, that, that definitely, yes, definitely, gives a sense, definitely gives a sense of fatality, doesn't it? Or possibly would be better. Possibly will have poor children too. There is why there is a drop, a relative drop, for example, but a growth, an, abs an absolute growth of poverty in sub-Saharan Africa. Well, the question would be, if, if, uh, if there has been an increase of public policy investments because there was an increase of the fiscal space, what is going to be happen now? What is actually happened now under a perspective of low growth or zero growth? What is going to be happen now? And also oppression for pressure for structural adjustments in the different countries in the world, but also in Latin America. Well, first, I can give you an example of this progress in terms of investments. We had, for example, Ecuador, where we saw initial increase in 2,002.9 points of GDP in terms of social expenditures, and we went to 8.3 in 2012 in terms of investments made in, in social policies. This has happened in also many South American countries. I think that I think that all your countries had this same experience in terms of uh, increase in investments, increased investments in social policies. But the economic perspective, then, this is actually, as, as just is, a, it's a, we have just, this is the graphics from IMF from two weeks ago, focusing on the on the, on the growth in the GDP in the countries. I don't know if uh, this is what, have you seen this before? No. You can see this is the outlook in more in the more developed economies. There is a we see a fall, but also there is a possibility of recovery and be able to go to better growth. What is expected in the countries then of developing economies is a, a more drastic drop and also a, a smaller recovery. And, uh, no, actually in the longer run. For us, the, it's, a, it's, it's a big challenge. But when we see uh, we analyze the economies, be it the developed economies and also the developing economies, there is a difference in terms of the economic possibilities between both. We have to understand this situation. I just wanted to call your attention, for example, to if you are going to see the US and Japan, Japan with um, a better uh, um, neg a negative likelihood, the better uh, uh, likelihood than the Americas in, for us in the Caribbean and South America, much of the fall is linked to Brazil, uh, due to Brazil, of course, which is the, the biggest economy and also Mexico. So much of what is happening is due to the due to what is happening in Brazil and Mexico. For example, we see Peru. Peru, for example, has a 
He has a different trend, a different economic trend, or even Colombia does. So what is happening in Brazil, in Mexico, and Argentina, and now Venezuela too, generates, all of this generates a big and important impact in the whole economy sector in the region. In the economic sector in the region, we know that we are going to be facing problems, especially not only due to the economic perspective, but also due to economic packages that come as a response to this same situation. Be it since the countries are how the, how the countries are reacting in face of these problems that might, in many cases actually get more, get, can worsen problems, especially in terms of economic growth that can be halted. For example, this is an analysis made, uh, made yesterday, or not yesterday, a very recent study from Isabel Ortiz, who was in the University of Colombia, now in the, and now it's in, she's in ILO, with the, which the Colombia University researchers seeing the reports of the IMF on how countries are, how countries are facing economic the in, the economic crisis then this talks about a contraction a retraction or slowdown of economic activities as of the analysis of public expenditures so the C, retraction contraction of public expenditures the, this countries face she has 187 countries in this case in her analysis at first glance, we can see that there was an expansion. Then we have to see this, actually, see it from the other side. It's low because there was an expansion of investment. When it's higher, what is higher is because there was a contraction of investments. This is how we have to consider this analysis with a ne negative view. So what happened in Brazil, for instance, is uh, to face the crisis, you expand social policies. We increase the family uh, benefits and grants, and also education, more investment. In health, we had nominal growth, uh, not uh, GDP participation, but many countries did react in this way. Then we had, we saw a contraction in social investment. And this is something I'm going to show you. The alternatives that the country started to use and which uh, produced a change in the investment of social in social policies. And there is a uh, perspective now uh, uh, that we are hoping to see another contraction, uh, a broader contraction uh, on social policies. So is this clear, what I've said so far? So let's keep going. Uh, I don't think we can say this is a cyclic behavior because now we're only looking at a short period of time. So I think it's much more related to the uh, social policy solutions that are used in each one of these periods. How do we choose a social policy. So a way to choose a social policy is to see what the neighbors are doing. So it's a contagious process. Because in some way, when the countries are looking for uh, social policy solutions, they look at developed uh, solutions and that have already been tried in other countries. So there is a pressure from the international uh, bodies. There is a pressure for uh, structural adjustment. And the crisis is an opportunity because in some way 
people are more available or open to these uh, structural adjustments in crisis scenarios and also because there is a certain desperation to uh, return to a more accelerated so this is a, a forecast and this depends on the uh, solutions that will be adopted in the macroeconomic uh, policies and microeconomic uh, policies. Not, not won't necessarily uh, come to pass. So there is a there is a there is the idea that we have to pay a high price right now, so we may leave the crisis uh, more uh, faster. But this is not necessarily so. There are authors. Stiglitz is one of them, and he says with these policies, this will not. So the population that is affected by this uh, public expenditure contraction, they will grow, of course, especially in developing countries. So if today we uh, see an impact on the populations that we see over here, the, the expectation is that it will grow, that impact in the broader parts or segments of the population. So what Isabel Ortiz and the others are saying is what we are seeing now is the decade of adjustment based on austerity uh, measures, economic uh, austerity measures and fiscal or tax adjustments. And this, these are the main measures for a fiscal adjustment, part of these packages for adjustment that the 187 countries are undergoing. Reduction of these uh, subsidies and cutbacks on income. Uh, there is also an, there's a focus on uh, targeting and many times the replacement of universal models for focused models. And I wanted to tell you a story. When I was in the Brazilian government, no, I had already left the government. I was uh, working in England. So an expert of an international agency uh, he asked about the, the countries of Eastern Europe. And a, a, he suggested the, the change of these universal models. He was talking about the change of universal models to focused models. And my suggestion was, do not change. Do not change. It's not something you should change. But they did change it. I don't think I was very convincing. There were other uh, economical factors that were more effective or had more weight. Uh, so we have also the uh, pension changes, uh, pension reform, and also the labor reform, also uh, health care reform. Uh, all the European models are changing. In uh, the Netherlands, they had a very significant reform in their healthcare system. We have uh, reforms in the uh, consumption rates and also privatization, which is a bit more uh, rare, but is also happening. So this is a very general uh, overview. I would like to mention something very specific to you. Not necessarily these things should not happen. There are things that are necessary. 
que mismo que sea una uh, reducción although it is a de, reduction de de una parte de la of población, rights of a part of the population, manera, in some way they, they are necessary measures to broaden social justice. Hace sentido? Does that make sense? Yo voy decir en tres I'm going to say this in three languages. Pensiones de los servidores públicos. So, pensions of public servants. They produce inequality. Es financiado por todos. Is funded by all. Porque es sobre todo subsidiado. Because it's subsidized mainly. So, toda la población paga. All the whole population pays to favor part of the population. So this, therefore, does not produce social justice. Uh, this model that does not produce social justice, right? What so, I was about to say is, I'm going to say in English. In that case, when we talk about public service in the pension system, it's necessary to revise that in order to produce social justice, because in that case, all populations paying for just to favor part of the population, in that case, ourselves. Bueno, entonces, uh, ¿qué estoy intentando decir aquí? Es una tipología so, importante. What I'm trying to say is that this is an important topology to understand what is happening, but not necessarily are we talking about things that shouldn't be done. But uh, generally speaking, what we can say is that there is a unfavorable change for the main part of the population. Bueno, este como parte de esta tipología, so as part of this uh, typology, uh, we can see in uh, countries of uh, Latin America and, uh, and, the, and the Caribbean uh, what is happening in both countries. Uh, yesterday, the president of Brazil, they, she changed. Uh, she did a pension reform today, actually, this morning. My uh, perception is that it was a necessary reform, but there was a change, a reform. People will lose rights. So we have to analyze this case by case, but generally speaking, if there, there is a contraction, countries like our countries uh, from South America, we have um, complex models. While we see a contraction of rights on one hand, we see an expansion of rights on the other hand. For instance, in the case of Brazil, there is a reform that uh, took place uh, recently and that is being implemented in Brazil, which is important in a labor contract that uh, expanded the rights of domestic workers in Brazil. So uh, the same time that we had a contraction model that is acting, we also have expansion of rights of part of the population. So these processes are complex. Uh, of course, uh, sometimes there is an absolute model of contraction. For instance, what happened in Italy. But many of the things that were happening in Italy were structural uh, problems of the models. That uh, they found this opportunity for reform. Um, crisis, uh, crises, and you know more than I do, that it's a great opportunity to correct uh, dysfunctional things, but it's also a, a horrible opportunity to broaden dysfunctional things. So it's a, a sphere of diabolical creativity. When I talk about my friends, our friends in Brazilia and the government, uh, say, well, you have an opportunity after 13 years, uh, there is certainly things in the government that we should change. But the problem is that many people want to uh, change, and we do have uh, political will 
to change in a direction that is not that interesting, bueno, entonces, that positive. So, Brazil, por ejemplo, es, eh, Brazil de pensiones, uh, we see here también, uh, pension reform in the case of Brazil, and we also see the labor reform. Otros, and eh, there are other reforms that are happening in all these countries. Bueno, este es una última pantalla de So this is de, the last uh, de Isabel, uh, slide of the study done by Isabel where Europa, it shows the growth of poverty in Europe especially due to unemployment and also de, due de to de cutbacks de in the social protection system. But uh, in Spain, for example, we saw an expansion as a strategy to reduce social conflict. So we see uh, changes, macroeconomic changes, but also the government is sensitive to political pressure. Uh, when I was in Portugal a few weeks ago, the, the great concern uh, now with the constitution of a new government uh, is what is the capacity to uh, attain uh, political support in, from the society when we see the crisis and the type of response produced by crisis. Everyone knew what was happening in Greece uh, and they was look, were looking at Greece as a destabilizing solution for the conservative governments of Spain and Portugal. And Greece uh, itself was not able to survive a huge pressure uh, to adopt conservative economic uh, measures. Greece, uh, even Greece I say, because there was a lot of political support from the population to the, these uh, governments. So what can we say of the uh, economic context. There is a dominance of solutions, of conservative solutions, uh, to, for this uh, global uh, systemic and broad crisis. This is also happening in South America, and it, uh, we see it in different degrees and different adjustment models. Many of the adjustments are structural, so therefore there is uh, correction opportunities uh, to correct these dysfunctional models, but many uh, many of these models are to uh, reduce social investment with future implications uh, in uh, protection loss. Very well. So, the question is, if the economic perspective is unfavorable, are there other trends that are more favorable and that are important for healthcare? Before, uh, before I begin with that uh, topic of my presentation, I would like to say that uh, healthcare in many of our countries, Brazil for instance, uh, it has reached a point where it's very difficult to uh, conduct uh, structural, relevant structural reforms. Uh, a little bit this is due to the fact that the structure is uh, very, uh, the reform is very deep and there is also uh, a struggle, there's resistance from the healthcare companies and they have blocked the more significant changes. There's also uh, the issue of the cost of healthcare investment due to uh, technological pressure, due to the increasing demands of investment. Uh, it has paralyzed, and so to speak, a uh, expansion of the uh, 
health care participation in the GDP, and also because we see a diversification of the investment on public policies that is uh, taking care of areas that we didn't take care of before, such as social care, for example. So, social assistance. So, there's many uh, factors that is, is linked to this issue, which is how to develop healthcare systems in countries where we see visible development, such as Brazil. We could mention other countries, Argentina, and many others. So, how do we do this? And at the same time, we know that in, in quality, uh, of access to quality service, inequality uh, regarding access to other policies linked to these social determinants, and therefore uh, heterogeneity of the epidemiologic patterns are present. So, uh, within this context, how do we advance in, so, uh, in healthcare policies? In a context where we have less funds, less money. So now we will begin uh, another part of my presentation where I will present other possibilities. So, firstly, we have this idea of having a platform that uh, goals for sustainable growth and what do these sustainable development goals bring bring us bring to us so there's another there's an important factor that the healthcare presence is linked to many uh, goals of this uh, platform so, uh, with uh, of these uh, 17, these, this, these are the ones I've selected, but there are others, other ways to link healthcare in a, a matrix. So, Another way to uh, reach these uh, connections, but others have a more critical perception. If there are favorable uh, points linked to this sustainable development platform, we also have to consider uh, the articulation of the economic, social, environmental dimension is not so closely linked for a framework that we need to favor integration, articulation of these three dimensions. So this is what would be ideal, uh, this is what we see over here, where we have a social, environmental, economic and good governance uh, are a bit closely uh, related or mixed, so to say. But most of all, we could say that first, it's, uh, firstly, it's clear that we can advocate uh, for this platform, strategic platform, for an advocacy uh, of, so, of the social, economic, and environmental dimensions together. In the Rio Plus 20 conference, this was an intense and important debate in the Earth Summit conference. I think that the outcome of this conference and now turned into a whole platform as it is. It's an advanced platform and progressive platform in which the dimensions are closely linked. Yes, there's another thing which is of the essence, which is the agenda. This is a broad agenda, wide agenda. Many cuts can be made, but of course also we see that we are just talking about an agenda 
that it's, it's geared towards articulating and integrating policies and countries, the components of the different dimensions, env environmental, economic, and social dimensions are all tied together. And finally, for example, last week there was a meeting in Bangkok on indicators of sustainable development. The meeting went well, better than what was expected, even myself. There was an idea of 230 indicators. It's OK. 230 indicators, it's quite well. We'll talk about this later, if you wish. But actually have but they have consistency that would allow for a monitoring and evaluation system that will be integrated another thing is also that the governance structure administrative structures that should emerge within this process come with this content actually sealed by integration it's an important possibility to ponder Imagine if health, I believe this kind of this movement in health is closely linked to understanding the fact the expansion, expansion of the healthcare system today depends on the expansion of social policy instead of uh, actually competing, uh, actually, instead of competing for allocations, we have to set up an articulation in, in for investments in social policies. And of course, theoretically, it's easier than, than in political practice. In political practice, Arena, actually, the, the struggle for allocations is cruel and terrible and harsh. It's actually it's a, actually is a it's a body fight. But theoretically, we do know that the more investments in social policies are made, results in health tend to be better too. But there are risks. There are risks. Also, we see the most important now is the the, uh, the contraction decade should pass. Uh, actually, also as Isabel Ortiz has defined it, a negative perspective. But also there are other issues to see the triumph of the structural contraction. There are more permanent things to consider, for example, corporate reactions, the fight for, for actually for allocations of the budget, this thing of the social perception of political economy, of political economics, of public action, where political actors do want obtain more, more political and social prestige in his poli their political performance. They are less interested in sharing the results of public policy. Yes. And the most important thing of all for me now, for my work at least, is we have to produce technology that will change the whole planning system and implementation of public policies. If we lack this type of technology, I'm not talking about tools, but I'm talking here about methods. If we if we lack the capacity of introducing this to the countries, resistance is grande. It will be will be great. Then, to conclude, for the meantime, I would like to say. Well, first. 
como dicen los ingleses, As the, by heart. The English say by heart. Sí, holístico. Be holistic. Hay que, hay que ser de verdad. Actually, we have to be it for, for real. No, holístico, no, no, no estoy be no, truly holistic. I'm not just starting nueva, with a new, sí. no es a new life based on yoga más, principles. Sí. I'm too tense to eh, be actually eh, to eh, follow eh, yoga eh, principles. Eh, What eh, I'm eh, saying eh, is, because always there will be differences between the political narrative and political practice. There are important differences to be found. The fight for budget, for budget actually is, is also corporate and personal. The design of policies might be broader and more comprehensive in this sense. What I mean is that there has to be consistency between what we said and what we do. After a certain extent, all of us are, we all favor integrated models provided that our sector there will be, have the leadership. All for us, all for us. The others for us too. We all work for us. Everybody works for us. For example, health in every single policy. I love this. But we have to be. Actually, we have to be coherent. When uh, health was the avant-garde of social policies, its leadership actually was never challenged. It was, it, it was a given with a model, with a system, as a corporation that was developed with a consistent narrative, with the capacity of producing its policies and influencing on the policy of the other policies, not only social policies, but can actually general policy, uh, general influence in the systemic, systemic model and also development structure as a uh, public policy, but this belongs to the past. There are other policies today with a lot of capacity, with political prestige. We have to be innovative. We have to find solutions for the new perspective or the new scenario. You have to be practical. Entonces, then, eh, eh, mismo se mira los even if we see the economic practical. packages, we have to be practical. We have to know where we're standing. We have to know how to respond. We have to know how to actually be responsive to problems. You have to be consistent. Please. Well, we cannot be, be in favor of corporativism. Oh, here, last bullet point, we have to be political. What we have to to today is a possibility in which the narrative the philosophical narrative of public health in Latin America that was made up, it was integrated basically, which was comprehensive, which is multidimensional, present in the, at, at the basis of the reform of the health systems in Latin America. Also, he has all, every component that up to a certain extent have great compliance to the platform of the SDGs. We have to use this capacity in order to be able to have today a new way of networking public policies. Now, it's not anymore actually the fact of looking for leadership. We have to find the effectiveness in policies. Then, today, if there is a or a sector in public policy that has great capacity of articulating uh, co in connecting swiftly and having a, a project. Sustainable project is the area of health. 
When we were talking about Millennium Development Goals, most of the uh, indicators came from the area of health because uh, there are, it's all at the basis of public policies, the stat statistics in health. Once again, we are just we are talking about the capacity today. Let's say, I should say it in other words, the health health systems in Latin America have surpluses. Of course, I'm not going to say yet actually to to the ministries of economy, but they have actually an actually surplus in competency and efficiency. And the surplus has to be used now in order to be able to connect and articulate the um, the health platform together with the the platforms platforms that can enable public policies in Latin America. This I stop here and now you you now it's your time to use the floor. Thank you.